Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Welcome to the latest episode of Boss Talks, and I'm here today with the amazing Christine Drummond. And if this is your first time, welcome. Welcome. We do this podcast like really often. <laughs> it's usually weekly. And the reason why we're so passionate about doing this podcast and getting it out to you is because we really want you to take the reins of your life, get behind the wheel and take control. Don't listen to the narrative that's being spewed at you out there and really just get you to make your own decisions. And we love to share the strategies that we have come up with because like Christine and I are both avid learners. And as we learn awesome things, we love implementing them and some work, some don't. And we'd love to share the lot with you. So if this is your first time, welcome. And if it's not, you know what the fee is. The fee is share it. If you find value in this, share it out. If you don't find value, let us know. If you do find value, let us know. But the only way we get this out, we don't use Facebook ads, we don't use anything else to get it out there is word of mouth. So if someone, if you hear something in here that someone needs to hear or someone needs to know that you care about, share it and share why you like it. So without further ado, today we are speaking about an amazing book that Christine and I have uh, started a mastermind around the old fashioned book club where we read a chapter and then we all meet and we discuss it and it's powerful. The book is called the laws of success by Napoleon Hill, who he's written multiple best selling books in the personal development and success uh, genre. And he's changed the lives of, I'd say hundreds of millions of people across the world. So if you ever wanted to know how to be successful, the author of Think and Grow Rich is also the guy who wrote The Laws of Success. Now, the story goes that he wrote The Laws of Success and he made it like a course on how to be successful in all areas of your life. And it's pretty full on. I've got to admit, it's pretty full on. And he got told that it was amazing, but for it to be a commercial success, he had to like tone it down a bit. So he went away and he created Think and Grow Rich, which is now one of the best-selling books of all time. It's still on best-selling list now, like decades and decades later. So Christine and I came up with an idea. All right, it was just Christine to, to make the podcast around uh, some, of the, some of the chapters we read. And today we are talking about the first chapter, which is a definite chief aim. So Christine, long intro. How important is it to have a definite chief aim? Oh, mate, I love that. And thank you for the intro. It's, um, it has definitely been a game changing book for me already. I read uh, Think and Grow Rich. And again, that was game changing enough. So I can't wait to finish reading this book. Um, it's so important to have a definite chief aim in life. Otherwise, you're wandering aimlessly through life and with no clear direction. So many people out there, actually, he, he has statistics in there. It's 95% of people uh, are wandering aimlessly, not living life, um, you know, with that fulfilling passion or purpose that pulls them through life. Instead, we're kind of treading water and in survival mode. And, you know, we tend to attract more of the things that we focus on, which he speaks about in this book. And we tend to surround ourselves with the people that, um, sort of vibrate on the same level of us as well. So you tend to find that a lot of broke people um, hang around other broke people or people who have a negative mindset will often hang around other people with a negative mindset. So, you know, a lot of this uh, chapter, it, it really gets you to, to look within. And what I love about it is it, it's all about getting to know yourself on a deeper level and what it is, what, could your definite chief aim be? So many of us have no idea what our mission is on this planet, you know, in this human form. And we will often go to our graves never knowing, you know, or never doing that thing that lights us up. Instead, we go to work for the man and we, we take unfulfilling jobs, jobs that create stress, you know, jobs where 
you know, we're feeling underpaid and underappreciated. But what I love about this book, Joel, is that he really gets you to start thinking differently around what is it that actually lights you up? What is your definite chief aim? And he talks about um, how to kind of discover that. But a couple of pages into the chapter, he talks about, you know, humility being a forerunner of success. And um, I think that's so true. And then he sort of talks about how to study yourself and how to study other people. And um, this really resonated with me because he said the best way to study someone or to really understand somebody is to observe, observe them when they're angry and observe them when they're in love, observe them when, they're, when money's involved, observe them when they're in trouble, observe them when they're joyful and triumphant, you know, when they're going through all these different phases in their life, observe them, you know, what kind of light or darkness are they portraying, you know, and I've been doing this uh, unbeknownst to my partner and I see him in a whole new light, you know, just by taking that conscious effort of pulling back and sitting on the sideline and seeing how he behaves and reacts, um, you know, during these different feelings, during these different emotions, during these different times when, you know, money is involved or not involved, you know, he's been out of work for a little while. So it's interesting to see the transition of when he's not at work to when he is in work, you know, and all these things that we kind of just, we don't recognize or appreciate, um, you know, through our everyday life. We don't take notice of them. So for me, just even a first, first few pages of this chapter was so eye-opening. And not only do I have a better understanding of myself and how I react and behave to certain situations and when I'm in uh, different emotions, um, but also the people around me. And I think it gives us a better understanding of each other. And we, we have this deeper meaning and um, this deeper connection because of it. So, um, yeah, so that's just me, just that, that's just the first couple of pages in, mate. Like, I know that um, you were sort of talking today about, you know, how posture and everything is so important as well in this area. I don't know, do you want to add a little bit around that while we're in these first few pages? Yeah, well, I think right now, like, with everything that's going on in the planet, you know, in Australia, there's lockdowns, there's plenty of crazy stuff happening, there's like, political turmoil across the planet. There's, uh, you know, even countries arguing with each other. It's like a pretty uncertain time. And I think that what I was thinking about this this morning when we were having the, the, the mastermind call was what a gift this all is to give us that ability to observe so many people while they're under stress. Like, so I was thinking, oh, wow, like maybe that's the, the silver lining, if there is one, like I'm sort of a positive guy like looking for the silver lining. Maybe that's it, you know, because one of the things when it all started, my coach said to me was like, under stress, you'll go back to who you really are. So angry people will become angry people. Uh, you know, happy people will look for happiness. Like uh, people that are constructive will look for constructive things to do. You know, probably the people that really love fitness when all this crazy stuff happened, probably turned to the, to fitness even more. And, you know, when the gyms closed, that probably was a really super challenging, to, and you know, all these different things that are happening just to see, you know, the, the, yeah, hundred percent what's, what's, um what's happening for people's, but yeah, like, like the posture of your body, like you were saying, like the, you know, the, the, the four things that, uh, we study in people when they're under stress, when they're out of their comfort zone is that, you know, step one, posture of your body. Step two, the tone of their voice, you know, look at their eyes. Are they looking away all the time? And I know that's one thing that uh, is like, I believe it's a pet peeve of yours, Christine, people that can't look you in the eye and, you know, be like, it's like polite or whatever, or, you know, uh, and the, the use of their words. So what words are they using? And um, in, the, in learning that, when I was reading that and in the book he says to do that for others, um, what I was so happy about is the people that were in our mastermind actually also wanted to look at themselves first in all that. So I think that's, um, that, that, that's a positive as well. So um, 
but yeah, like, like, like getting to the, 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 the definite chief aim aspect of it. Like what I'm really curious about for you, Christine is uh, like well, from you is you've had definite chief aims in the past. And, you know, like I, I, some people say it's goal setting, but for some reason, the definite chief aim feels a bit more, uh, like it has a bit more power to it, a bit more gravity to it. You know, I've had goals. I've had definitely had definite chief aims. I haven't really mastered the one where it's like, I know I've got this other larger one that that's out there that I want to, that I want to identify more specifically. Uh, but I've found that like the small ones, like building, building a certain amount of wealth, like getting a certain amount of clients, getting to a certain level in a business, like, you know, buying the property that I'm on now, you know? So when I find that target, I can go after it. It's just finding that, you know, finding the strategy to go for, for the, the, the next one. So I'm at the point right now where I'm looking to identify that next definite chief aim. And um, you said that you were going to go through that uh, yourself and you've got a strategy. So I'm going to get you to share that strategy if you like how you're going to do it so I can go and do it too. So how are you going to find your, uh, or, or maybe like more, become more laser focused on what your next definite chief aim that, you know, it says to put it up on the wall, put it everywhere in, in your vision, read it multiple times a day before you go to bed, when you first get up, like how, how are you going to find that so that we can do that? Yeah, it's a great question. For me, it's really honing in on what it is that I love to do and how I, how I see myself serving others. You know, my definite chief aim is not about me at all. It's about service to other people. How can I make a greater impact? And um, the, the way that I've been taught in the past is, you know, if you were given six months to live and resources and money were not an issue, like really sitting down in a quiet place with some music on and really thinking about that. What would you do with your last six months on this planet? You know, who would you be spending your time with? What activities would you be filling your day with? Um, would you be traveling? Would you be at the beach? Would you be in the mountains? Would you be meditating? Would you be out there educating and inspiring? Would you be setting up a legacy business or a legacy charity so that your name continues on? Like, so for me, um, you know, I got some time to really hone in on that and what I would do with my last six months. And from that, your values pop out. You know, you can extract, there's some key words that you'll write down. And, and we just went through and we simply just highlighted those key words. So inspiration, education, travel, family, you know, they were all highlighted in my passage that I wrote down. And then it's a matter of, you know, really squashing it down to your top three values. You know, what are your top three values or priorities in your life? And, and that sometimes they will change, you know. And when I first did this, my family were not in my top three. You know, my family, we were in a fantastic place and everything like that. So I felt like they didn't need to feature in the top three of my values or my priorities. So um, I think my top, my first top three was inspiration, travel and education. And that all comes from empowering people to live their best life and things like that. So when discovering what your definite chief aim is, you can't do it when kids are running around the house. You can't do it when there's other people, other energies, you know, that are in, interfering with your vibration and your, your frequency. So this is where you've really got to get out on your own, get out in nature, get in a quiet space where it's just you, no distractions, where you can really tap into source, God, the universe, whatever, whatever it is to you, where you can really feel alignment and get some answers. And you'll be surprised when you get into that place where you have no distractions, no kids coming in and interrupting or partners, you'll be really surprised by how clear the answers start coming through when you start asking them. And, you know, there's a passage in this book that he says, um, you know, there was an old farmer um, who used to wind up his prayers every day saying, oh God, give me an open mind. And I really feel like, Joel, like if people out there in the world today had more open minds about what is possible or 
less, um, you know, less prejudice against each other. And instead of tearing each other down and having the negative and the hatred that we've got out there and let's start raising each other up. Let's start having an open mind to other people's visions and values. And just because someone's values or vision is different to your own, doesn't make it wrong. You know, that could be truth, their truth and your truth is different. Um, but the more that we kind of extract the strengths out of each other, the, um, the better the planet will be. So an open mind is crucial. And it's one of the things that he mentions in this chapter. So if you are looking and, and wanting to discover what your definite chief aim is, that's what I highly recommend. How would you spend your last six months Get into a place of um, isolation where you can really hone in on that? And take some notes. And um, Joel, in the book as well, we they talk about some of the most powerful and successful people on the planet, how they used to do these think weeks where they would go away for a week in the bush, in the hinterlands or whatever, and they would just think for a whole week, no distractions. Um, and I actually had this opportunity last year when I went to America for three weeks with no kids, where I had that freedom to really hone in on this again. So um, I got a lot of answers last year. So now it's just about defining that again. Um, but you're right. Like when I don't have um, the definite chief aim in front of me all the time and I take on too many things, it takes me off path of achieving that definite chief aim. And then that's when you start feeling the overwhelm. That's when you start feeling the stress. That's when you start feeling out of alignment with yourself because now you're not living in your highest values. So it's really important to figure out what they are and just have that one thing. Don't try and do a, a thousand things at once. Go and master one thing first. And then when you've done that, then you can look at other things. But really honing in on that definite chief aim is crucial if you want to have a successful life. And obviously success, success looks differently to all of us. And it's not about the money. But as you said today, Joel, having money and happiness you know, is, is the ultimate, you know, that's the ultimate goal for a lot of people. Yeah. Well, he says in there that the, the 95% of people are like unsuccessful and 5% are successful. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about either helping the 5% become even more successful or some of the people that want to be part of the 5% become that. And, you know, he says that of all the people surveyed and it's like 16,000 people surveyed, so it's not a, it's not a tiny, uh, you know, <laughs> like pool of people. It's, it's a, he said that the people that are in the 5% are doing something that both they're happy doing and that makes some money. He said, if any of those ingredients um, are missing, you're actually unsuccessful. They, they fall into the unsuccessful vote because there's no point in doing something you hate forever. Right. <laughs> and there's no point doing something that you love if you've got a, live in poverty. So, you know, it, that, that happens, but you know, like, and you say, pe like people do resist new ideas. So that open mind is important. And, you know, some of the notes just that I, that I, I didn't share this morning, but like it says here, like I must keep, uh, I must not close my mind because stagnant minds are the breeding place for fear. So if you want to, and, and fear is what causes stress and stress is what causes illness. And, you know, uh, you know, the dis-ease of your brain and your mind causes disease in the body. So, like, um, like I, must keep a, I must keep my mind open. I must continue to make certain that I don't have contempt before prior examination. So, I can't just shut the door on things before I actually take a closer look. You know what I mean? And if the world was full of more people that understood that one sentence we'd probably be <laughs> in a utopia now. So, you know, success is the development of power uh, with which to get whatever like one wants in life without interfering uh, with other people's rights. So, you know, power is inseparate, inseparately related to success and power is the organized energy or effort. So it's about, you know, like ha having that definite chief aim and being able to, to, to look at new things with, with an open mind. And I've written down already, like, Oh God, give me an open mind. So, so I think that's where, uh, you know, like 
it's sort of a paradox, isn't it, Drummo? Like we, we've got to learn, like successful people say no to the most things. So like, uh, and while still having an open mind. So you've got to have like both hands, like, like both of those things in each hand, you know, because you've got to be open to new ideas, but you also got to be willing to say no. And I think the most successful people I've seen, like I know that there are successful people. And if I had a hair, like if someone comes up to them with a harebrained idea, they say no. Like I don't think you could get, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett to, um, I don't know, <laughs> go canoeing down a creek or something. I don't know, like something that they're not interested in doing that's not helping them get their definite chief aim. So I really find the value in this, you know, awareness, like reading this book and having this mastermind and, and, and why I recommend it so highly and is to, to have the awareness that you may not have your definite chief aim, that you may be coasting through life and being pulled in all different directions and, you know, living someone else's dream who does have a definite chief aim and you might not even know it. And like I say, like you said before, it might not be money that we're talking about. It could be a fitness. You could be like destroying your health, working for someone else who's looking after their health, you know, like how many people worked in coal mines without the proper protection and, you know, or like there's so many different like things we can say here, or, you know, you're working in uh, like David Goggins. He was working as a, as a guy that worked with chemicals, you know, like lots of farmers out there that are working in the fields using uh, chemicals, that are going to give them cancer one day because they're living someone else's dream. Well, you know, this book will provide you the awareness so you can make a decision which could change your life. And if you don't know that you don't know, then you can't, you can't change your mind. So I love what you said, Christine. I'm actually like, I, it's funny. I've learned that technique and I've forgotten it and now I've remembered it and I'm like, Oh, wow, well, I've already got, um, you know, two things there. So uh, yeah, that's great. So, um, I really, I, I highly recommend that anyone that reads this book, uh, go read the introduction first, where it's going to tell you to, uh, to create a mastermind. I read the entire book last year, uh, during the 75 hard. Now, Jomo, could you imagine reading 10 pages of this for your 75 hard? I was... <laughs> Are you doing it for your 75 hard? Yeah. Oh my God. It was crazy for me. There were some days where I was like, oh my God, that's like reading 20 pages of any other book. <laughs> but, you know, like I really, I highly recommend that you find yourself a mastermind because today we, we've had two meetings and just hearing like Christine and the other people in the, in the group, what stood out for them and what, what meaning they gave certain things. Like there were certain uh, comments that were made today that from my narrow thinking saw it one way and when someone read the same thing and it meant something totally different i was like oh wow and it was just so mind expanding wasn't it like uh, like i don't know i'm getting a lot out of it and you want to have people in your group that are going to be honest who aren't going to have ego who are going to be willing to share make it a safe place for them so they can say whatever they've got to say and admit whatever they've got to admit and you're not going to Obviously, you won't. You anyone who's listening, this is a good person. They're not going to broadcast it. But yeah, I took so many notes, like from from all of you, that it was uh, that it was crazy. But yeah, really, just yeah, really learning, who, finding your posse that's going to help you stay on point with your definite chief aim. I think that's just such a powerful step. And and then you know, using the the law of success. Uh, one of the laws of success, which is uh, anyone who's done the secret, anyone who's done any manifestation and you're anything like me and you just want the process, uh, then, you know, it's like use auto suggestion uh, on the burning desire. So if you, you got to identify your burning desire, what is it that you want? Do you want to have an amazing relationship? Do you want to have a six pack? Do you want to be rich? Do you want to have a Ferrari? Do you want to have a beach house? Like, what do you want? create that burning desire desire you by using like like turn the heat up by using auto suggestion so that's just like incantations your ims like you've all learned them from all these gurus and us and everyone like you can like a quick google search can help you learn those uh 
to turn the heat up on your, on your burning desire, which will help you create a definite purpose, which is your, your chief aim. And then you've got to take sig sufficient effective action to achieve that purpose. And that's how you do it. And that's when I actually reverse engineer how I've done the successful things in my life where I've really felt like I was part of that 5% that could do anything and have anything. Um, that's what I did. And the times that I'm like just floundering around, not really getting the results I want, it's because I'm, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so it's black and white. I don't know. Did you see it that way, Christine? Like, it's just so obvious. Like, <laughs> Yeah, totally. And, um, and I love how you mentioned um, the posse, the people around you, because how often do we mention something or we say we're going to do something or we've, we've got this goal that we want to achieve and depending on who you bring it up with, you will get different reactions. So the people that are living in fear and worry and a lot of those negative emotions, you'll get a totally different reaction to the people who are living in a more blissful, positive, successful state all the time. So uh, I've got a really good example of this. Um, you know, just recently, it, it was my definite chief aim to take my whole family whale watching and have the most incredible experience without any fear, just everyone get on the boat, have the most amazing time. Now, Someone in my life very close to me has done this experience before and they have a lot of fear around it because they got very sick and they've got a fear of the ocean and all this kind of stuff. Now, my daughter started to have some of these fears um, come up for her. You know, what if the whale jumps on the boat and all this kind of stuff. And I had to say to the people that were in our posse, um, everyone keep your fears and your negative emotions to yourself this is going to be the most positive experience of our life. And then some people started to go, yeah, but prevention and all this stuff. And I was like, hang on, uh, 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 uh. we don't want to go down the medication path. We don't want to have to take seasick tablets. We're going to go out there. We don't know how our kids are going to react on the ocean. And we're just going to take it in our stride. And you know what? They had the most incredible experience. But if we had have let other people's fears hold us back, I doubt we would have even got on the boat. And this brings me to the next point that a lot of our thoughts are not even our own. A lot of the thoughts that we're carrying around are other people's fears, judgment, doubt. You know what I mean? So we've got to be open-minded enough to question the thoughts that are popping in our head. Is this really true? Have I actually, like, have I achieved it before? And if you haven't, is it, like, it's possible to achieve that. And that's one of the things, like, at the start of every chapter he has written in this book you can do it if you believe you can and i think that's the thing joel so many people lack that self-belief because they let fear of judgment fear of poverty fear of illness fear of whatever hold them back and it stops them from having the most incredible adventures and experiences in life um, because of that but i really want people to get this like there's there's no new thoughts out there Okay, there's, there's no new ideas. Like it's just basically they're getting washed, rinsed, repeated. They're getting thrown at us in different ways. So something in this book that really resonated with me was, you know, really making sure that you're exposing yourself to different ways of thinking. I think that's the key, you know, and you can't do that by doing the exact same thing with the exact same people every day. You're not challenging your thought processes, you're not challenging your thinking and we become lazy thinkers. We don't question anything, we become the sheeple, we do what society wants and we just, you know, we just go with the flow. But I'm here to tell you today that life doesn't have to be like that. You know, if you are constantly evolving, constantly reading, constantly um, immersing yourself in new teachings and becoming a student of what you're learning, your life will be elevated. It will be illuminated. You will have new ways of thinking, which will then in turn allow you to implement things in a different way, tweak things, you know, and really, um, you know, really go on this beautiful self-evolution process. You know, we are a never ending project. There's never a destination with your growth through life, with your journey through life. So what I love about this chapter and having a definite chief aim 
is that it's going to direct your focus so that, you know, when the world comes along and wants to steal your focus and try and distract you, you've got this, this definite chief aim in front of you and you know who you are, what you stand for and where you're heading. And it doesn't matter what the, what the world throws at you, you are on point because you are in tune, you're living within your values. And we, we know like life is always going to throw curveballs at you. You can't like, it, it's risky. Being alive is risky. Okay. You're not going to get out of it alive and things are going to come up. You're going to go through pain. You're going to go through hurt. You're going to lose loved ones, but you're also going to have a lot of triumphs. You're going to have a lot of wins along the way, but that's dependent on your mindset. It's dependent on the, the frequency that you put out there. And as Joel said before, um, you know, it's about like attracting like. If you're vibrating really low with a lot of those negative feelings most of the time, guess what? You are going to attract more of that into your life. Whereas if you tend to play above that and you vibrate higher and you turn up to life with more energy and an open-mindedness and, and with that posture that Joel spoke about, as I said, your life will be elevated because you will attract people of that higher vibration as well. There'll be a meeting of the minds and that's where the mastermind group really comes in play as well, Joel. It's so crucial because when you're hanging around people that are vibrating at the same level that want to elevate their life as well, that's when you're in this vortex of anything is possible. You know, that's when your dreams, your goals, your beliefs starts to grow bigger and bigger. And that's what I love about it. And that's kind of what this, um, this, the first part of this book is alluding to, and you don't have to be the expert. This was probably my biggest lesson, trying to be the expert and do everything on your own. You don't need to, when you've got a mastermind group, when you've got people around you that are more skilled or educated in a certain field, you can use each other's strengths to help elevate everybody in the mastermind. And I think that's so, so crucial to know. Um, and hopefully it's a relief because a lot of entrepreneurs listen to our podcast, Joel, and it can get lonely sometimes as an entrepreneur because we tend to think that we have to do everything on our own. But as you said today, if it's not your zone of genius and it's taking you out of your zone of genius, delegate it to somebody else who loves doing that stuff. So yeah, that was probably one of the biggest things that I took out of this as well. But I know you've got a few more um, to throw in there, mate. Christine, you're on fire. It's like every, <laughs> every, like practically every podcast, I'm like, holy crap, like I've got a tough act to follow. <laughs> when, you know, because you just do such a great job of getting it across. But I have to say that I could only imagine having the chief of the negativity police uh, organising my events for me. Uh, as a family, <laughs> you know, laying the law down. It's, it's funny. You don't know, your ears must burn sometimes when I get asked about our group, our events or anything like that. And I get someone says, oh, what if someone turns up and have is negative? I'm like, the chief of the negativity, please. Christine will just kick them out. <laughs> Won't be me. It'll be her. So, um, yeah, because I know you don't tolerate it. But, yeah, like, and I love what you said there. Don't become a lazy thinker. And um, that, that might go up on my wall. <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so yeah, all I can say is, um, yeah, like just f find, find your posse, find people that are going to help you get the goals that you want. You can reverse engineer it. Uh, it's happened to me before when I've run my business, uh, particularly in my, my last supermarket, I, I went in before I even owned the store and I'd already worked out who I needed to fill the spots there that, either A, I didn't want to do and like, well, and B, that I wasn't that good at, you know, like I could do it, but you know, if something's going to take me 12 hours to do and I could have just hired my friend or one of my previous workers or an expert to do it in an hour, how does that make sense to anyone in the logical world? But people do it, <laughs> people do it. So, you know, and what that's doing is that's taking time away from, from, you know, what you are great at, you know, if you are a master at uh, coding and you're in, you know, or you're really great at building websites, why would you, but you're not so good at talking with people, why would you do the, per, the customer service? You know, like you, you know, and it just, it, 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 you got to find ways to get people into their zone of genius. Like I wouldn't, if someone was really super talkative, 
I wouldn't get them to be, I wouldn't think they'd be a great bookkeeper. And if someone was like really like sitting in a cubicle and not talking to anyone, they wouldn't be my receptionist. You know what I mean? So it's like, you got to, basically what I'm saying is like, the way I see it is like, I see the, the, what I'm trying to achieve. I put it out on the table and I think who's going to be the best fit for that and how do I bring value to them to get them to come on board and, and, and help me do this. And, you know, that whether that's your health, whether that's, you know, creating a podcast, whether that's creating an event, whether that's blowing up, you know, you create, creating like, a, you know, the Fearless Mums Club health hub that you've got going or the Fearless Men's Club that we're, that we're building as well. Like, we've got to get the right people in the right seats, right? And, and something that, that, that came up in the book as well you know, we've got the definite chief aim. We've got to get everyone to buy in or into it. But you've also got to be okay with some people are going to start with you. And for whatever reason, because life happens, they might become negative. Maybe they're not, you're on the journey and they want to get off. Or maybe they become cancerous to the whole thing. You know, maybe you become cancerous. Maybe you need to get off. Who knows? You know what I mean? So you got to be willing, you got to understand that like, uh, you know, what we get taught in network marketing, Christine, the people that you start with aren't the people that you finish with necessarily, you know, and, and, and that, that's the same with, with anything, you know? So uh, yeah, Christine, I, I'm, I'm feeling good about this one. I think I've said all I need to say. And I think the value that's been in this podcast today has just been epic. And, you know, if you ever wanted to know you how to get your definite chief aim. Christine just nailed it earlier on. So go back and listen to that again and, and go for it. So Christine, final words. Awesome. Well, just to close it out, like he gives you some instructions for, for applying the principles of the lesson. And his first step says, decide what your major aim in life shall be. You know, what, what is it? Like, what is your major aim in life? And we spoke about, you know, writing down how you'd spend your last six months and, you know, really identifying what your highest values are. So um, the second step then is, um, you know, forming an alliance with some person or persons who will cooperate with you in carrying out these plans and transforming your definite chief aim into reality. And that's where the accountability group or the mastermind really comes into play. But getting your partner, your spouse, your, you know, your family on board as well, um, providing that they're positive people, <laughs> I wouldn't get the negative Nancys in there. Um, but that's it, guys. Like, that's how you find your definite chief aim. And, um, you know, use the, use the strategy that I, that I spelled out for you before to really hone in on that. But don't wait. Don't wait a, a week or a month or, you know, like do it this weekend or, you know, um, do it within the next seven days. Like really schedule in some time, like an hour or two where you can just be completely on your own and you can figure this stuff out and, and ask those deeper questions of, you know, what lights me up? What brings me joy? If I could do anything with my life right now, what would I do, you know? And, um sometimes we don't find it because we don't try different things. So how can you also be open enough to try new experiences or new jobs? Could you volunteer maybe in a role um, or a career or a passion that you would love to sort of test before you dive all in? So, you know, I think it's, um, yeah, it's about being open really and, um, and really aligning yourself with, as I said, people that, are going to raise you up that are going to help instill the belief in you because that belief is going to get shaky on this journey. It is the doubt's going to enter, the fear is going to enter and you want people that have got your back. You want people that say, no, remember that chief definite aim. That's what you're going for. Okay. And staying really true to that um, is, is key. And, you know, there's a great book out there as well called the one thing. And it's exactly that principle, you know, honing in on that one thing that you can give your energy, your passion, your time to, um, that's not only going to bring you joy, but it's also going to get you paid as well, because that's going to give you more choices and experiences in life. And just to close out, Joel, on the whole mindset thing as well, you know, when you do find that there's some negative things 
um, creeping into your, into your mindset. And, um, you know, it happened to us a little bit uh, while we were away. Um, things went quite wrong <laughs> quite often while we were away. We were expecting things to be open and they weren't because of all the stuff that's going on you know, with restrictions at the moment. Um, the weather was was horrendous in the first three days. And we could have sat there, you know, twiddling our thumbs and being all negative. But again, it was my um, definite chief aim for us to have the most incredible experience. And so we had to um, choose alternate, alternate things to do. We had to choose um, different activities based on the weather and things like that. Um, and, you know, it, it works. So if you can flip the negative into a positive, if you can look for the solution rather than focusing on the problem, like, wow, guys, the weather's so crap today. We can't go do this, what we had planned, but what can we do instead? You know, and really focusing on that. So have a think about that. Where is that coming up in your life right now? Where are the problems or the challenges coming up? And instead of focusing on what's going wrong, Focus on, okay, what could we shift? What could we adjust? What could we change and make it a positive, to have a positive experience come out of this? So I think that's so crucial, mate. And, um, oh, guys, like, honestly, it's mindset. You know, being in network marketing and, um, you know, helping, you know, thousands of people with all different belief systems, all different fears, all different emotions I, I feel like I'm like at the top of the umbrella and I get to look down on all these people and the way that their brains work and the people that are most successful and having the most fun and, and moving through um, are the ones that are the gatekeepers of their thoughts. They are the ones that have the positivity that are, that are you know, quick to um, adjust and the ones that just have a different outlook on life. And they're the ones that have a better quality of life because of it, you know? So really focus on what it is that you do want rather than focusing on what you don't want. I work with a few people that keep focusing on what they don't want and they keep getting more of what they don't want. And it's, it's that mindset. It really, really is. So if you take nothing else out of this chapter and what we've spoken about today, it really is that, you can achieve absolutely anything that you believe that you can do. And we honestly believe that. And we want that for you guys as well. So I guess that's my final comments, mate, from, um, from this chapter. And I'm so excited to share the next chapter on the next podcast. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Like, and it's going to bring so much value. And we will be bringing that to you uh, very shortly. So wherever you are, have a most outstanding day. Damn.